I'm Matt, the moderator. DeAndre is here with Bill Goldberg uh, in the garage, working on uh, working on the uh, the badass workbench. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> I I I had a, a high esteemed uh, visitor come on Friday, so I stayed up till four in the morning cleaning the workbench, and then now, <clears throat> after that visitor has left, and all of the shenanigans that went along with that visitor are over with i have absolutely destroyed my workbench and now <laughs> i'm trying to organize shit so that we can prepare to tear down uh the first major project here at goldberg's garage uh which will be highly documented on youtube uh, all of our shenanigans but um man i'm i'm gonna i i've had the cobra here obviously since i've had everything else and i haven't driven it once on the road um one issue or another um the overlying fact that it's terrifying the way that it sits it's not the safest car in the world so long story short i want to make this th- i want to drive all my cars that's why i have this thing right that's why we have all our stuff yeah isn't it isn't it right well so. i mean <laughs> that's the plan <laughs> yeah exactly. so the, the the cobra was a, a kit car that you put the the, the stock car engine in um and well, yeah but but yeah i didn't it was a it was a uh a unique motor cars that's that's still in existence because i've tracked them down um did a deal with ernie elliott where they did 10 of these things ernie dropped in a, a nascar motor and uh off they go so yeah years ago when you were uh here in California, still, we went down and filmed um, for GQ magazine. They did a YouTube thing that I hosted, uh, Car Collectors. And that car was running, and we took that out for a minute. And we, you know, whatever, flew down the road, found a quiet area, did a few donuts. Cops showed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, um, I, I think you had like a nosy neighbor, like someone on top of the hill, like looks down and was like, it was a well-known it was a well-known spot that people would go and do donuts and i didn't really think about it and but it was a uh, and i get it it's a lady that lived up on the hill that overlooked that area it was right off of the 15 it was fairly secluded for for where it was and you know it reverberated through the canyon when people obviously would rev do whatever they did down there so she had a bird's eye view she picked up the phone and she did what she did And, and long story short since i don't live in california anymore uh, uh, the police came and remember we off. He, I offered him to drive the thing, and he didn't. He wanted he didn't to. Want it. He and they were want actually it. very nice. Though. They were they great. Were, yeah. They were cool. We and we were doing it during the day. It wasn't like shenanigans at two a.m. in the morning. I've, obviously, that's just uh, rude. But uh, it was a quick. It was a quick shoot. Cops showed up pretty quickly. They must be on speed dial with her. They must know what's going yes. on. Yeah. And uh, they showed up. They're like, "What's going on?" We're like, oh, we did a quick donut. We did the filming and the people there and they're like yeah we're getting complaints let's wrap it up let's and i was like all right thank you <laughs> they were they were fine about it it was just they were great man yeah they, it just cut the filming short but it was a the point is super badass car i mean loud fast just so much motor for a tiny piece and that was kind of the idea it was like What's the silliest thing you can put this engine in? And we're like, well, oh, yeah, here, you, here you go. Over. What is it? Four, uh, four, four, four pounds to uh, one horsepower. So it's like 2,400 pounds, 20, 2,300 pounds and 800, eight, you know, conservative yeah. 800. So, I mean, yeah, it's got the power to weight ratio of a ninja. I mean, the thing's absolutely ridiculous on top of the fact that it's a short wheelbase. It's archaic. It's a box design. It's a kit car to begin with. So, I mean, what we want to, I want to, I want to take the thing out and, and make it handle as well as humanly possible, make it stop. I don't want to make it stop too, too much harder than it does now because I don't want to be thrown out of it. But I mean, it's not like you got a lot of weight to stop on this thing, but I want it to be responsive. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I want it to be functional, man. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Right. So, um, and then cosmetically, I think I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull all the, the, the Chrome trim off 
uh, including the hoop and the, uh, you know, the excite exhaust and the trim, the light trim. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, powder coat everything. And, uh, I'm going to flat black everything and I'm going to murder the, murder this thing out. Man. I'm going <laughs> to, yeah. I'm going to make it fun. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, if it's and then, because it's a kid car, you don't have to try to fully replicate an actual Cobra with it. Uh, absolutely it, just, not. Just make I mean, it, I'm not going to go far departure yeah. from what it, from what it originally looks like because it's one of the most beautiful cars in the world. Right. But I just want to make it mine. I want to make it different. And I, and I'm going to contact KW and see if they uh, have anything as an upgrade for it. I already talked to Savaggio. Savaggio, no, Savaggio and I FaceTime last night. We we're talking about the rear end. And as I'm looking at my Dodge products, I mean, there's no reason not to get away from this Jag rear end, throw the brakes on the outside. I mean, yeah, it, it's a it, the inboard it, brakes are kind of a pain in the ass. Kind of a pain in the ass, and it's and, just it, it doesn't allow you to have a, a larger wheel, right? So yeah, I mean, I just I want to make this thing fun. I want to make it fun, and I see right now that uh, that Cobra is coming out with 2.0. Did you see that? Yeah pretty wild right and it's ironic that i'm doing it at that time i mean i had nothing no idea about it i just want this thing to be updated i want to i don't want it to be as as uh era correct as it was mm -hmm. you know because technology's moved around and let's have some fun with it so yeah yeah i'm yeah, organizing cool all car. my I tools so i can screw everything up and destroy this car <laughs> but it's gonna be fun man i can't wait for it um you were talking about uh talking about having a guest come over have filming let's let's update on that a little bit um, so the the most important update is that our announcement of friday night at barrett jackson was incorrect um looks like saturday night's going to be the night and uh it is what it is man those guys i'm not going to reinvent the wheel i'm not going to pass judgment on when i think the car should go the car should go whenever they think it should go because they know best so um let's have fun saturday night throw me into the fray with everybody else and rock and roll right so uh barrett jackson scottsdale coming up in january you've got the two cars the demon and the demon 170 we spoke about it before matching color matching vin uh you guys uh you you got the car we saw it on instagram you finally got the car loaded in the transport brought it home the, the I, yeah, I from... have to go i have to go get the car i have to make sure all the money's in the bank i pick up the car the transport shows up unfortunately they are by far the best transport company that i've used in this area for sure um thank you bill bird and bird industries or bird imports but um they show up beautiful trailer uh, beautiful hauler. It's one of those clear, you know, haulers. It's beautiful, yeah. right? So it, it, great camera shots on the way back. And, um, but it, they forgot the key to the lock. So and that took <laughs> another 45 minutes. So, I mean, time is ticking and Craig Jackson is in the air getting ready to land and meet us at Goldberg's garage to do a photo shoot of the two vehicles and, it just it wasn't working out great, man. <laughs> but but the people at Ansara uh, helped us out by destroying the lock in record time, and uh, we got the thing loaded up. And on the way back, uh, I got the phone call that he landed, and so it kind of was a race back to the house. And um, we made it happen, man. It was fun. Uh, Craig landed, showed up here. We got all the cars prepped, and I took the lawman out of the bubble. Right? Yeah. First time ever. I mean, not ever, but first time in a long time. Yeah, in three since, years. since you pretty much got it back and yeah, out of storage. Complete detail, beautiful. I think he walked right by it. <laughs> <laughs> he was so enthralled with something. I think it was the the Z twenty eight that uh, that was at in their their showroom for a couple of years that I bought there. Um, but it was it was pretty funny. But it was it was an honor to have him here, man. Uh, CEO of of Barrett Jackson. Um, preeminent freaking car collector. I mean, you look yeah. at what he's had over throughout the years, and then you have him coming to your place, and you're like, "Oh shit, this is filthy." It's you know, but at the end of the day, he had a great time. We had a great shoot, and uh, now the cars uh, are on their way to Scottsdale as we speak. Should be arriving manana, and they are gonna end up at my buddy Rob Hart's place, the Hellcat compound, and then they will be detailed and 
caressed until uh, further notice. Whenever Barrett wants to do some more shooting with him, we're going to send him up there for the day and, you know, get as much publicity as humanly possible around this thing. And um, I'm going to try to pull Dodge in the fray and see if they can throw some corporate support behind it, um, considering they are the number one sponsor of Barrett Jackson anyway. So, yeah. Um, We'll see, man. We shall see. It was, it was fun. It was, it was a, as a car guy, it was a great time. Right. I mean, he, the, the garage doors pull up, Craig pulls out in the one seventy and lays a little bit of rubber. And then I pull out in the 18 and I lay a lot of bit of rubber and uh, then they go right on the trailer, you know, afterwards and on their way. So um, now someone's got to yep. clean that rubber off the, <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I it, that's, that's no it. no it's no no yeah. not like that not even close no uh -uh. not even close to that because you know the tires first of all the car's got 10 miles on it both yeah. of them one's got nine one's got 10 second of all you know the cool thing with those tires as you know back in the day they used to mark them up you know at the factory on the way okay it's done boom boom so are the serial numbers on the tire same thing with these. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow that off, but nor did I yeah, want to yeah. spend four hours doing my thing. Right. So, and it's somebody else's car and the engines aren't broken in. Right. So you got to check all those boxes. I did just want to do a tiny burnout before I handed it to somebody else, but yeah. So there should be a pretty good, uh, uh, a video coming out with Barrett Jackson, uh, featuring you guys and the cars and talking about them and promoting it for, for the sale. Uh, in January, which will be good. It'll be a fun. It'll be a fun event. Like we said, there's going to be a bunch of uh, a bunch of us out. I there. think it's going to be more than a fun event. I, I think it's going to be nuts, man. So it's going to be nuts. Everyone's going to be looking forward to it. sweating a little on the forehead there as uh, as you're up on the auction block. But uh, you got to try to rally the room. Yo, dude. Uh, you know I can't control shit like that. And the fact is, yes, my nerves will be about to explode, but. I'm just going to have fun, man, and be caught up in the moment and hope for the best. Uh, one of the craziest live auctions I've been to uh, at Barrett Jackson was uh, the Batmobile, the, the, the TV Batmobile uh, before George Barris passed. He was, mm -hmm. I think he was there for that. I think he was there for that. Uh, I'm trying to remember if he had just passed or if he was, I think he was there for that. And uh, it, it obviously that one was an anomaly and it went for way more money than anybody thought, but just the volume of that room, uh, like I get it. You, you, you go to SummerSlam and you, your, your music kicks in, you go, that's the whole point is the room to go nuts for that. Right. Cause it's fans. But oh yeah, Barrett Jackson, <laughs> you know, it's the same. It's the same kind of thing. I mean, I've been, I did it this weekend in Atlanta. You know, we did a skit with the Falcons where I I blew some Tampa fan up, right? And um, they played my music, <laughs> and I might be 180 years old, but they played my music, and I went in there, and the fans appreciated it, and that's kind of where I came from, and spent a lot of time, and. It was cool, man. It was it was a rush, right? So I've been to Barrett Jackson. I mean, remember when they said, what the heck was the name of the bus? The Future Liner? Yeah, F Future Liner, yeah. Yeah, remember that? I do. That I was do a remember trip. That I mean, there's so many- I was there for that one. There's so many different instances throughout the years with the Cobras throughout the, the Hemi Cuda convertible. Um, the, you know, selling the the- the super bird for 600 grand and then selling it again for 600 grand for charity. I mean, those are the, there's been some badass times over there, man, but yeah, I mean, it's in, in, it's the same kind of feeling. Um, yeah. When you drive up on stage in a, something that you know is going to be different, right. And have some fun with and everybody's involved and, mm -hmm. Man, I got the whole Hellcat community behind this thing. You know, Rob Hart and all those guys who who've who've owned those cars for so many years and who have invested so much in, you know, the downfall of the V8 in that they've purchased I don't know, dozens and dozens and dozens of these V the, and, but these guys just love these cars and it behooves everybody for them to go up and have a good showing, right? So, um it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
I can guarantee yeah, you. Yeah, it'll be a big party I, for I sure. I guarantee you it's fun. gonna be, it's actually a time I'm actually looking forward to because I'm not stressed. The cars are already yeah. gonna be, you know, I got Dave Wise and I got all the other guys taking care of them. Um a lot of the things, as you know, have you sold a car at Barrett? Uh no, haven't sold a car at Barrett. Okay, it's it's fucking nerve wracking. Yeah, I mean, it, it, whether you're me or whether you, it doesn't matter. I mean, the whole process is nerve wracking. Whether it's getting it consigned, whether it's figuring out your day, whether it's I'm telling you, man, just leading up to the freaking show and making sure that your car is absolutely spotless because you know that that one guy that really wants it is going to be nitpicky as dog shit as he should be. And that one time when he walks by, if your car's not ready, you know, so every second you're on the edge of your seat, if you really care about it, but, and there've been times I've, I don't know, I've sold 10 cars there. There've been times when I've done it myself. And there's been times when I've, I've entrusted others to do it, but when you entrust others to do it, there's always that, Oh, you know, I, I'm not there myself. I can't do it. Right. You know, yeah. yeah right. So, you gotta- but this time going into it, man, I feel, I mean, I'm blessed because everything worked out really well. So, yeah. Um, I don't have to stress going into it as much as I normally would every single time that I've sold a car there. I, I can tell you that right now. And it's over a month away. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah. So ask every me, time ask uh, me a week away. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, and then uh, I haven't really made like the travel plans yet, but I, I'm probably going to go out for, for a few days. Are you going to go out for a few days? You're going to. Yeah. I, 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 to I'm going to Airbnb but, it with the family. Um, yeah. 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 It's going to, yeah. it's going to be bitching, man. There's still a lot of places available. I mean, a lot of places, you know, stay near Kierland commons. Uh, you're really close to the auction. Um, it's, it's going to be bitching, man. I can't wait. Yeah, it'll be fun. I cannot wait. Weather permitting, uh, it'll be beautiful. It's beautiful there. That's yeah. Amazing. Well, at least your cars are indoor no matter what. <laughs> well, yeah. Again, like I said, I mean, the, a lot of the things that you have to take into consideration in leading up to it, uh, thank God they're going to be taken care of. It behooves Barrett Jackson to take good care of the car because it's a representative of what they're pushing during prime time and it behooves me to also have 10 or 20 people watching over cars <laughs> just to yeah. make sure that i'm fine but i mean yeah it's it's all good and and again it's not like i have they're brand new cars yeah right? so yeah, i'm not worried right. about them being clean to the point you know did i get all the stuff that i you know underneath the there's nothing yeah, they're but, brand freaking new so and, and, i don't have to worry per- about that anybody purchasing the cars this is a different type of purchase if you go and you're looking for a really good hot rod or rest mod or even a full restoration you're really looking at the quality of that build or the quality of that no restoration question. this is a new car you're buying it just for its collectability right now because mm-hmm. you're buying the pair and it's the matching pair the matching vin and you're right there's there, it's it's just a little bit different type of buyer. This is they want a wrapper car. They want, well, yeah, and like I say, going into it, where all your stress is, is did I clean that part of the car? Is that quarter panel up underneath and that little freaking nook and cranny the place where the camera is going to see? I, I'm not worried about that because they they just came off a trailer. They yeah, just they, came from the factory, right? Basically, so that that takes yeah. a lot of angst out of you know the prep for the auction for me because i'm freaking i got ocd really bad man i want my stuff it's a representative it's representative of goldberg's garage and of me ultimately so i don't i don't want it to show up and look like shit right so yeah so that's out of it yeah all right um what else has been going on i uh i the other night um Adam Carolla and I went to a screening of the movie Ferrari. I'm interested to hear your, yeah. And um, most of you guys have heard about this. You're starting to see the promos. I believe it comes out maybe December 25th or something like that. Twenty December 25th comes out. So Ferrari feature film about Enzo Ferrari uh, directed by Michael Mann. I like Michael Mann films, heat and some of the films are so fantastic. 
Um, Adam Driver is Enzo Ferrari. And if you kind of understand the, the story, uh, he's got a wife, Laura Ferrari, and he's got this girlfriend, mistress that he hooked up with and had a kid with, uh, Lena Lardy, played by Sh Shailene Woodley. Um, now, I bring this up because uh, Adam Driver had his first son with his wife, Dino, and Dino <laughs> passed away. And that's why the car was named Dino after him, because he was a young man in his 20s working on the engine for uh, a new engine. And then he did a race car engine and then they made the production car in his name, in his honor. Mm -hmm. But with the mistress, he had a son, Piero Ferrari and Piero Ferrari is in our documentary, The 24 Hour War. When we reached out to Ferrari, uh, again and again and again for like a year saying we're making this film and i know you guys lose because it's 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 the 24 hour it's ford versus ferrari at lama you go but it's an important part of history and it was interesting enough that uh piero ferrari or someone on his team eventually after bugging them for a year they're like we get calls all the time everybody wants to do a documentary everybody wants to do a tv show youtube channel everybody wants to film it and he said but we saw your newman film and liked it and realized this was the real deal. And so he agreed to do it. That's how nice. we got Piero Ferrari. That's cool. Piero Ferrari is like That's vice chairman story. or former chairman of Ferrari. He's a billionaire now. Owns still owns like 10, 10.2% of Ferrari. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of interesting because in this feature film, you see a young Piero Ferrari and you see kind of his interest in his dad and the company where as a kid, he kind of like didn't acknowledge him publicly, mm -hmm. you know, and mostly because of the wife. So uh, that being said, um, Adam has interviewed Michael Mann several times about th this film. And Michael Mann was telling him the story. He goes, I've been trying to get this film made for 20 years. Uh, uh, Robert De Niro was was attached to it at one point, and then Hugh Jackman was attached to it as Enzo Ferrari at one point, and now it's Adam Driver. And then we went, we saw the movie, um, and then we went out to dinner, and we both kind of looked at each other and were like, I feel like after 20 years of trying to get this done, it should have been a little better. Uh, <laughs> and I, I wish I had happier news, but it's a good movie. But it's not better than Rush. It's not better than Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, and we were trying to, like, we were sitting there over dinner trying to pinpoint what it was. And it, it's just an interesting thing. So uh, it's it's definitely about Enzo Ferrari. Uh, all the ancillary characters that were in there, the racing car drivers and names that you know, um, some that you may know, some of you may not know, but the racing drivers, the mechanics, the, you know, the, the accountants, the people that sort of came together to make this had, you were not invested in any of those characters at all. When you watch Ford v Ferrari, you're invested in every character. It, it's like all of a sudden the guy who plays Henry Ford is on screen and then he's in the car and he's doing the ride along. And then you're like, that is a breakout character. What a great, funny scene. Like his character, that actor did so good. And uh, oh, what's his name? John Bernthal. You can uh, say did. that about all the characters in that, whether yeah. the, the part was small or big, everyone had an important scene that that defined that character i believe yes and memorable because you get there and Absolutely. go oh i remember john playing lee iacocca and i remember the guy playing bb and i remember the guy you like uh, about the mechanic slamming the door and locking you know uh, i can't remember the guys the 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 ceo or the the tyrant uh locking him in the the yes yes in the ford, office in the office yeah uh, while ford went out for the drive with yeah with shelby so it it didn't have a lot of you didn't get too invested into the other characters, which was a little bad. And then also, it's a story about uh, a, not not a ruthless, but or sociopath, but just sort of this hard nosed Ferrari CEO. And and yes, they sort of emphasize the fact that he was like it's all about the car it's not really about the driver and you're in it to win it and you're you're risking your life and if you die 
I'll get another driver. Mm -hmm. It sounds harsh, but that was sort of the reality of it. And that kind of comes across in the film. But because of that, Ferrari's not very much, he's not really a likable character. And, And I'm not saying it isn't true to the story, but Ford v. Ferrari was a great film because they they put a little bit of a Hollywood into it and made it a great film and invested in the characters. And then when you watch our documentary, The 24-Hour War, you get to see some more of the facts, how things panned out. And I think those two films together are fantastic. Watch mm-hmm. Ford v. Ferrari and then watch the doc and go the super entertaining Hollywood version and then sort of the facts version. You, you can kind of fill in the blanks yeah. and you really get the nice story. So this, Enzo Ferrari, not super likable. The wife, angry all the time. Uh, the the mistress, cast Shailene Woodley. She's great. Uh, nothing important about that character in the film. So there was nobody to root for. There was no hero. There was no feel-good moment. And then, like, there was tragedy. So they did the... The Mille Milia was the race, thousand mile race. And and because they needed to put some drama. But at the beginning of the movie, when they were like, this is the race, this is the race, everything. We're going to save our company. We're in financial ruins if we don't win this race. And then we're like, eh, why they pick that race? And I get that that's the story, but it wasn't. It The other thing is, is that race is a thousand miles. And there's no fans, right? There's like, it's kind of like a Baja race. Like every once in a while, there's a strip of road with the community is there, but it doesn't have grandstands full of people and cheering Mm and, and, you know, something dramatic happens and the whole crowd's like, Ooh, oh oh no. Instead, uh, instead, because they don't, it's not like they have cell phones either. If something happens, you know, they get a phone call two hours later you know, from, from a local news reporter and then it ends up on a seven inch black and white screen TV. Yeah. You can't make that very sexy. Yeah. So there was just, there was no emotion. So there was no, uh, there was no involvement from the audience, from the spectators. Um, The, the characters other than Enzo, you just don't get fully invested in. Uh, And there wasn't a hero. There wasn't anybody likable in there. Not that, Everybody did a great job. Adam Driver was fantastic. Penelope Cruz is great. Uh, it's nice to see Patrick Dempsey in there. We're a little bit friendly with Patrick Dempsey. Obviously, Adam's close with them. They were like neighbors or something for years and years. Um, and and it was done well. Now, the cars look fantastic. They sound fantastic. You can hear the difference between the 8 and the 12. When you see the Maserati and the oh, Ferrari, yeah. you hear the 8, you hear the 12. They dialed it in great. And then... Look at some of the background cars, you know, uh, the Goldwing Mercedes and stuff. And it, it's all beautiful. It's all mm-hmm. fantastic. And I'm sure there's tons of real hero cars, not all replicas, the ones mm-hmm. that they don't thrash on that are there. Uh, but it just kind of lacked. And then, uh, I don't know, Adam Adam kind of brought up the point. He's like, yeah, I like Michael Mann a lot. He's a super smart guy. He's a great director. I love his films. And he goes, but it's not like he was thrown into this project that needed to get it done in 18 months. He's like, he's been thinking about this for 20 years and this is what, that's we got. what he came so up with. It, it just, I, I just, it just lacked a little bit of, of, of something, you know, well, it can't be Ford versus Ferrari. When you watch the movie heat, if you guys remember that, right. And they're running around shooting up Venice Boulevard or whatever it is. And everyone's a criminal. I like, but you still rooted for the, you even were rooting for a There's bad still guy. still an endearing quality, right? Yeah. There's like you were rooting for a bad guy and the mess of a cop, right? Uh, Al Pacino's character was, you know, sort of self-destructive in his marriage, his kids. And, and you're kind of rooting for him too. And, but this one, you didn't really have that. So um, I listen, it's, I, I'm, I don't want to make it sound like I'm being harsher than it is. I'm just saying my expectations were high. I was a they little weren't... bit let down. It's a great movie. You should see it. But in the order of, you know, Ferrari Rush and Ford V Ferrari, for example, uh, this would be number three on the list. Yeah. I would even go so far to say, if you go, you see this movie, you're going to say, yeah, I get it. It's a good story. Pretty good movie. But Next year, when this thing is playing on TV 15 times, uh, you know, 
Rush and Ford v Ferrari, it can pop up any time in the movie. You can be 30 minutes in, an hour in, and you're like, eh, I'll just watch the end of this movie. I've seen it a bunch. And I feel the same way about Gone in 60 still Seconds. Still, exactly. They're still entertaining no matter where you pick them up from. Gone in 60 Seconds, you can flick it on at any point in the movie. You know it's a ridiculous movie, and you're going to go... Yeah, I know, but the car sounds so good and it's so much exactly. fun to watch. And you could just you could put it on the background and you could just hear what's going on and you you smile because it's a fun movie. I don't think you're gonna watch this movie again and again and again in the background. You're gonna be like, oh, they're not to the part where they do the race and that you know. Well, like, I'll be honest with you, like, after yeah. listening to you, I don't think I'm not I'm gonna watch it the first time. So <laughs> I mean, listen, it's a great story and it's worth watching. I'm just saying that's not enough to drive me. Or if, to waste two and a half hours of my time. If you were expecting Ford v Ferrari, it this is not that. Thank you for saving me some time. <laughs> uh, wait, listen. When it comes on TV or Netflix or whatever, go ahead. If and I'm watch on a it. plane yeah. and I'm going to you know the middle of the Caribbean and I yeah what yeah me yeah knows? yes you, you know what uh, by all means i still if, watch if, ford versus ferrari at first <laughs> <And then, laughs> even though you see it yeah. if i needed to go to sleep i might put that i don't know you didn't set it up very well so i uh, um, i listen i I'm just trying to be sort of a be a, a film geek about it uh mm -hmm. but but a car but the car guy you be a car guy about it too right so you know what appeals to you and what doesn't so what i'm saying is is uh it's a great story and the cars are fantastic. If this was a documentary, this is a great documentary. But as a, a blockbuster feature film, yeah. it 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 lacked a little bit of the Hollywood. And it's weird because a lot of people who saw Ford v Ferrari and go, I love the movie, but it had a little too much Hollywood creativity. I was like, I know because it's a feature film <laughs> and it's made to to make money right like we made a documentary go see the documentary but this one is kind of in between the two right it's not the most entertaining hollywood film and it's probably got a little bit of creative freedom to not make it the full documentary but it's a great story and you do get an insight into how ferrari was built and how they sort of struggled and and yes they glimpsed on Ferrari maybe selling to Ford or doing the deal with Fiat and because they needed money and he was burning money through the racing program and not selling enough cars. They touched on it. They, they didn't even really create enough drama with it, but they, they touched on it. Uh, the wife is the one going, you're going to be out of business. You're going to be out of business. You're going to be out of business. And he was like, kind of not my problem. <laughs> kind of like, other people in the company, it's their problem, not mine. I'm here to race and win. So, and there's probably some truth to to that, to that attitude. I don't know how much he stressed over insolvency with the company, but um, uh, it wouldn't seem to be very much. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's it's good. There, there's a lot worse shit you can go see in the movie theater and uh, than this, and a lot less interesting stories. Yeah. In this that are out there but um that's a that's my take on uh that's my take on ferrari <laughs> on the feature film um looking at the film and thinking about collectability i don't know if you guys got a chance to see this but uh haggerty has published their list of future collectibles um haggerty you know, the insurance company, they also do their Haggerty valuations. They're very much, they have a huge data uh, side of the business and they track the auctions and the market valuations of and the cars. And they have a list of cars that they think are going to be uh, future collectibles. Um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, what do you, what do you, you know, I don't mean. Yeah. I mean, and what they not necessarily collectible. They're saying these cars are going to move in value uh, over the course of several years. Um, the Lamborghini Countach, the 25th anniversary edition. The Countaches are all moving, and the 25th anniversary edition is the one with the crazy, like, uh, like cheese grater vents. Um, so Pagani, I believe, was the designer at 
a Lamborghini. And this was the car he did sort of the finale of the Countach. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Horatio Pagani designed um, on this before he moved on and did his thing. I, I of course, Countach is going to go up in value. Um, they have a 1946 to 1950 Chrysler town and country. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think, I think that's fine on the list. Uh, the 2008 to 2013 BMW M3, you look at the E30s, you look at the E36, you look at what's going on with the E46. Like I, I, I get this, the BMW is getting there. Um, the, the 97 and 99 Mitsubishi Pierro evolution. If I, if I got that right, if I said that right, uh, um, I, <laughs> it's kind of this little SUV with the crazy flares and the, if you think of the Lamborghini SUV, uh, yeah, the old the, one. Yeah. The old one was the, the LM 002 or whatever it is. This is sort of the, the tiny baby knockoff, you know, version That's of hideous. it. Um, mm. I don't know. Maybe listen, is it going to go up in value? Maybe, maybe because the value is so low, but, uh, <laughs> um, I'm not saying it's going to be a $4 million car, you know, like if you go from zero to 10, that's a huge dump jump, right? Cause you're at zero. So anyway, well, yeah. I, um, let's just say you, you wouldn't I'm, see this in my garage. I mean, I can agree with a couple on this list, but I can definitely not. Yeah. Agree. Ferrari with FF, of course, it's going to go up anything Ferrari. Um, yeah. Jaguar XKR, the 2000 to 2005 XKR. I'm thinking, I, I wouldn't say that vehicle D is no. I mean, that's my opinion. Uh, I mean, now, there was nothing special originally with that vehicle that would make it stand. I mean, what's why is it collectible? What, what did they say about it? I, I, you know, I, and I'm not sure why they're, I think it's just starting to move in value because it, it has a little bit of that design that feels like Z8. A BMW Z8. Now, I would go so far yeah. as to say XKRS. If you're gonna get the that car, you want to get the rarest version of it. Absolutely. Um, the 65 to 70 Chevy Impala SS. Um, I I haven't been really focusing on the muscle cars recently, but this one was weird on the list because uh, I was looking at it going, well, isn't it already, you know, aren't 60 muscle cars already pulling, pulling money. And, and why would that one stand out as to be one that would pull more than others in the future? Right. I guess it's undervalued and, and yeah. potentially going up. Um, they have the uh, 81 to 86 Jeep CJ eight. Scrambler. scrambler yeah i get that um yeah i i mean you look the at what i get the pro i get them all and you know compare like you said because some of them are, are worth nothing right now yeah right yeah. and so yeah so the 64 to 66 thunderbird um yes we went through the 50s those cars really went up 55 57 uh, the next, you know, the, the, the big brother always drags up the little brother, right? So now that those cars are going, you're dragging up the 60s Thunderbirds. Um, and then the one on the list that's catching people's attention is the Plymouth, Plymouth Prowler, 97 to 2002. Uh, I, I, I guess the thought here is they're cheap <laughs> and they have a unique look. Why doesn't the car deserve more attention other than being a piece of junk exactly. um, and only having the automatic transmission? Will it be go up in value because it's, it's collectible odd. and it's, it's low value or, or will people start to like get these and maybe modify them and turn them into something interesting? I, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think people were going, you know what? We had a little stint here of a few years where we did a real throwback car. We try to make a hot rod looking car. Granted, it had to pass emissions and it had to, it had to have bumpers and it had, you know, it, all of those things on it. But uh, 
I, I think the idea behind it is worth more than the car itself, if that makes sense. That's a very nice way of putting it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the list uh, from Haggerty. So, um, yeah, I don't sorry know. Maybe about, keep sorry, I'm yawning. Cars. If you're looking for uh, some of these are entry level, some of them are not. Um, but, you know, maybe some things to to take a look at if you're shopping around. But um yeah. If you're going to start yeah. collecting cars, I wouldn't go off of that list. Let's just <laughs> I, listen. <laughs> just, if you can get a Ferrari opinion. FF, by all means, get a Ferrari well, yeah. FF. That's, that would be I, the that that would be the only one. There was a uh, the the hatchback, you know, Ferrari. I drove one of those. It's fun to drive, and it, it didn't get the attention because it was this weird kind of little shooting brake kind of thing. But it's a cool car, and it's nice. It's and, cool. It's so cool. It's uh, it's so ugly. It's cool. It's one yeah. of those. It's like yeah. the front of the '70 Coronet. Right, right. And it's got a little bit of that BMW M Coupe, you know, uh, kind of yeah. style to it, uh, which is, you know, like a little shoe, like a boot. Um, it threw people off with the ads in the snow, I think. Remember yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So is there anything else? I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I think God. we're going to wrap it up for the year. Whoa. I think we are done uh oh merry gonna, christmas and happy hanukkah to everybody and we're gonna uh, we're happy gonna, new year and rock and roll we're gonna take a little break we'll be back the beginning of january um we do got a few things on the docket in january i think um uh january 27th barrett jackson saturday night goldberg's pair of demons go across the block That's yes me. and in january when we come back we will have uh we're going to talk to the guys from Zinger. Did you see these cars? The fully like 3D printed crazy mm -hmm. supercar. We saw them at Velocity and then at Monterey. Um, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, they do a, a supercar that's tandem. You sit one behind the other. Mm -hmm. uh, a rear engine. Um, uh, everything in the back, just like the whole structure, um, looks very kind of crazy and organic. And it's all like CAD designed in 3D printed metal. Uh, hey, man, I'm not going to turn my nose down to the future, right? So, I mean, look at what HRE did with wheels. 3D it looks like that. Wheels, it looks right? like that wheel in the back of the car as yeah, a rear sure. substructure. Sure it's got the rigidity and everything. And, and, and it's just beautiful in its it, own, it's, in its new way, right? So. And I'm it, looking forward to seeing it. It's very expensive supercar. They designed an engine, I believe, in house. Uh, well, what was the wheel? What, what what did it cost to do the wheel at HRE? Could you imagine doing a freaking car? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it, maybe we'll get into a little bit about sort of the 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 design and the engineering behind something like this. We're going to talk to those guys. So uh, we're going to uh, something to look forward to in January. So. Guys, thanks so much. We appreciate you listening to the show uh, throughout the year and over the years. We appreciate uh, all the support for Goldberg's new YouTube channel and the Goldberg's Garage swag and for uh, Bravago and and all of that great stuff. So and everything uh, that CarCast stands for. And uh, putting a plan together to to sort of reboot, if you will, CarCast, make it bigger, make it better. Um, and do a lot more with it. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry happy Christmas. Year, happy man. Hanukkah. I'll speak, I'll speak to you soon. And uh, everybody have a prosperous holiday and rock and roll. And we're, we're going to have some good content coming out so that everyone, while they're uh, sitting by the fire, uh, watching football and the opening presents, uh, can watch some car stuff. So tune in. Thanks, guys. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. And gas in the gas tank. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit carcastshow.com.